Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy and this is Attic Treasures Etc. And I'm really glad you're here today. I am so excited because I have finally finished reorganizing my whole craft room. Now, I did this for the challenge that's hosted by Kara Brandon. Um, Kara Brandon Creations, Kara Brandon and Friends is her um, is her Facebook group. And I thought this project would take me three, four days, maybe a week. Three weeks is what it has taken me to do this. And I literally have touched everything in my craft room and reorganized it, except for the books. I've, I already did the books, um, oh, I don't know, a month and a half or so ago. So they're, they're in fine shape, but everything else got totally touched. So um, I'm not gonna show you the whole craft room because I am gonna post a video specifically for a craft room tour on January 25th. But today I wanted to show you how I have organized my scrapbook papers and, and scrapbook paper scraps using the 5S method. Now, if you've watched my other videos on this method, the five S's are sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. So what I have tried to do with each five uh, S project that I have um, completed in my craft room is to think of three things that have become challenges or annoyed me about that aspect of junk journaling or crafting or, or whatever it is. And with my scrapbook paper, my three main annoyances were, I cannot find, I can never remember what scrapbook paper stack the little tags are that you can, you know, that are kind of ready-made tags or the quotes or uh, journal cards, things like that. I can never remember which ones, uh, which stacks they're in. And I had like this whole wall full of scrapbook papers that I was constantly having to just go through them. So that was one of my challenges. Then uh, the other challenge was uh, not being, well, looking through like 25 stacks of scrapbook paper just to find the perfect one, uh, the perfect paper that I wanted for whatever project I was working on. And then the third challenge was, is that a lot of scrapbook paper stacks have their solid papers and their uh, patterned papers all kind of mixed together. And I felt that that was kind of annoying. I want brown and I want a certain shade of brown, but I don't want to have to look through 25 stacks of scrapbook paper just to find the perfect shade of brown or pink or red or whatever it is that I'm looking for. So those were my three challenges. So the first one I decided to tackle was um, the challenge I have about trying to find the ready-made tags and journal cards and, and things like that. So what I did was I took all of those pages, I went through every single scrapbook paper stack I had and took out all of those pages that had the ready-made tags and things like that and I put them in a little cart under my desk. So I'm gonna move the camera so you can kind of see that. Okay, so my husband also added this little light for me. So he put it on wheels so that I can easily roll it um, out and roll it back. So I have my paper trimmer in here, uh, my, my envelope punch board, and my stamp platform, and, and a couple of other things in here that I use a lot. But what I did is I took um, the, like I said, the scrapbook paper stacks and I took out the pages that have like all the quotes on them and I put them in one of these little um, mm, organizers, I guess you could say. A lot of, these were all gifted to me, so I, I already had them. But they, and they came with little dividers. So these are under my table all the time now. So, and I have them labeled. These are sentiments and book page background, things like that. And then I have one also for, um, for letters. So all the pages with just individual letters on them. Those are in here now. And you know, each one is a little bit different. But now I have them there, and then this one also has numbers. So these are handy, and I can, you know, access them. I don't have to go looking for them. I know they're all here. Um, this one has like the ready-made um, 
tags and stamps. This one has like faux stamps and I love these and I've used these in clusters and, and things like that, but I could never remember what stack of scrapbook paper they were from. So those are handy now. And then, uh, let's see, there was this one with some, uh, you know, things that I can cut out individually that I probably wouldn't use the whole sheet. This one has uh, tickets. This is a Tim Holtz page, I think, or maybe not. I don't know. I can't remember now. There are some journal cards. That they look like ads. So all of these things are here now, and they're all they're all together. And then this one has like some of these little, you know, ready to cut out tags and and things like that. Okay, so that is problem number one or challenge number one, engineered out so that those are all together and I have them handy and I don't have to go looking for them now. I just have to look through them to see which one I want. So that just goes under there. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off and take you to the other side of my table to show you my scrapbook paper. All right, so here I am. I'm sitting on the floor on the other side of my craft table and you can see all of my scrapbook paper that I have here. So actually quite a bit. So one of my problems or challenges, maybe I should get closer to my phone so you can hear me, um, was having to search dozens of stacks for the exact perfect paper that I wanted. And the problem was is that they weren't really grouped in any kind of organized fashion. So what I did is, first of all, I kind of took everything out, went through everything and grouped things together. So, and then I put them in these, um, these um, stack holders, file holders, whatever you want to call them, and then um, labeled them. So all of the papers in this one, for example, are vintage sort of, you know, just kind of what I, it, it's just my own designation for what I would consider a more vintage look. And I even put a label here underneath. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Down here. There we go. Down here where it says vintage. So I know that that's where this stack goes. Now, if I want to take the whole thing out, I can put it in the bin un underneath my desk and kind of pull from it as I'm working on a journal. But I would probably only take the one stack. Then over here, I have all of my, my Tim Holtz papers and vintage neutrals are in this area. And then I've got these and these little individual ones. And like I said, these were all gifted to me years ago by a dear friend who, uh, I guess she had too many because she gave a bunch to me. <laughs> And then these are just, they don't really fit in a category. They're just kind of miscellaneous papers that I don't use very often. So I have these dividers and I um, labeled these as, these are neutrals. And I try to have, I must've walked past these so that they, the dividers kind of push themselves back in. But um, I try to have the, the dividers out so I can see what they say. So I've got some retro papers here. There's an Alice in Wonderland um, stack, and then um, this one is just kind of a, a die cut type of stack that I don't really use very much. So these are the ones that I would probably use the least. Then I have botanicals all in here, and anything that's, you know, really flowery, things like that, um, this is in this one. And these are themed ones down here. So these are ones that I would put together, like for this one's a travel, Taj Mahal, that kind of goes um, with a travel theme, but at least, and these are just binder clips. So I just, um, if you don't have any of these, um, these holders, this was my answer when I ran out of holders. So this, I just labeled the binder clip. And then over here, this stack is all of, all of the stacks in here in this holder, they're all black and white. So some of them have a little bit of glitter on them, but they're all just black and white and gray. And that's it. So they are, they're patterned, but they're simply black and white type stacks. Then the other thing that I did um, when I was going through and organizing everything is I, um, I took out all of the 
you know, the stacks that I didn't really want to keep the whole thing, the entire stack, I went through them and took out only the papers that I knew that I would use. And since one of my um, challenges was having the, the solids mixed up with the patterns and, and everything was just sort of all mixed up, I took out all the ones that I knew that I would probably use or felt that I might use, high likelihood that I would use, and I separated them, first of all, by pattern and then by solid. And then I put them kind of in color groupings. So here I have, these are all patterned papers, and I have patterns, it says patterns on the bottom, and then it has kind of the colors that are that are, you know, color groupings that are in here. So I've got purples, blues, reds, pinks, and oranges in here. And then these are all like autumn leaves and, and um, things like that. So kind of an autumn theme. Uh, they were, they were, I had a, quite a few of those and they didn't really fit with any of the other, the other categories. And then I have um, all the solid papers down here. Basically, however, <laughs> Whatever made sense to me as far as the color groupings is how I did that. Now, I also had a lot of stacks of children's type. And I know that, you know, I'll still do uh, like scrapbook pages for children, grandchildren, um, baby books and things like that. But those are all down here. Let's see if I, if I can point you down in that area. So they're all down here in this section. I've got foam, it's for when the grandkids come over, there's coloring books here, plus a bunch of stacks of children's type of scrapbook paper down there. Okay, so those are the sheets and stacks of scrapbook paper that I have, and that is my method of organizing. And what's nice is that I can go right to it. If I know what I want, I can go right to it without having to pull them all out and search for them. So I have sorted them and I have set them in order. I standardize them by putting the labels on them. And what shine means is just kind of keeping them in, in their order. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I'm going to what I've done with my scrapbook paper scraps. So I'm going to turn the camera off and go back to my desk. Okay, so I'm back now, and the solution for uh, managing my scrapbook paper scraps for me was to put them in binders. This is a two-inch binder, no one and a half-inch binder, um, thick. It's just a three-ring you know, standard binder that I got from Walmart. And this one has the label of solid papers and solid scraps. And then I've also got some vellum and acetate and some prototypes of uh, things that I've made that I want to, you know, keep on hand because I forget how I make things. <laughs> so inside, I also have them by, let's see if I can do it this way. I have them in order of color and I made these holders out of sheet protectors. So if you would like a tutorial on how to make these holders, please let me know in the comments because they're really quite handy. So this is obviously the blue stack and I've got a little pocket right here. Um, can you see okay? There we go. And then a, po a smaller pocket over here. Now originally I'll tell you that I just had them in sheet protectors. All the scraps were just like in one sheet protector, not, I mean, by color, of course. But every time I turned the page, they would just flop around. And so that's why I made um, these holders. So let's see, I, I'll kind of show you the construction of it. So I have this pocket here and a pocket here, a pocket here. Um, a pocket here and here. So you know, put these back. And this kind of, this can actually even go there. This holds things in enough of a, you know, steady enough configuration, I guess, so they don't just flop around. I mean, there's a little bit of flopping, of course, but not that much. So, and then on the back, I have a pocket here, a pocket here, and then also a bigger pocket in the back, right there. 
So it ends up being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pockets. And that actually works pretty well for me. So now I have green and then red and gold. This is actually all gold. Some glitter. You know, it's not all scrapbook paper. This is some handmade paper. And then pinks and reds, browns, including like file folder uh, scraps and things like that. So I've already started using this and I have to tell you, I love this method of organizing my scraps. I get back here and I've got some vellum that I've stamped on, tissue paper, and then just some extra little uh, page protectors that I found laying around in my organizing efforts. So these are all solid papers. And the, the binders stand up on their own, you know, which is really nice because I have them uh, next to my desk, not very far away. And then I have this one for the um, patterned paper. And then I've also got some warm wallpaper in here from Tim Holtz. So as you can see, these are a lot fuller because I use more patterned paper um, than I do the solid paper. But what's nice is that these are all together now and I can, um, you know, go through these and find whatever I'm looking for much easier. I can see everything and I can kind of gauge how big they are by what pocket they're in. So, um, and again, they're grouped by color and they're just um, quite handy quite easy to get to. So that is my 5S method for taking care of all of my scrapbook papers. Um, I've engineered out all of the problems that were really bothering me and just, I mean, it wasn't like any one thing was a big deal. It's just the more time I have to spend looking for something, the less time I have to actually be creating. And if I can make my creating time as stress-free as possible, then I like doing that. And so I was so excited that I was all done <laughs> organizing my craft room, this big three week project, because it wasn't just my craft space, it was also my office space got reorganized, my sewing space got reorganized, a lot of stuff in the closet got reorganized as well. So when I woke up today, I thought I'm gonna have some fun. So I just got up and I instantly made, out of all my scraps, well, not all my scraps, but I was able to get to my scraps, um, just these cute clusters. I just made what I called a foot of clusters. So look at how cute is that. <laughs> so that's what I did this morning. Then we uh, ran some errands and then came back and decided to put this video together for you. So again, if you would like a, a tutorial on putting together those, um, the scrap pocket um, cheap protector thing, let me know in the comments and then I'll do a video on that. But for now, I'll leave it here. Um, stay tuned for the whole craft room tour and that will be up on the 25th. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you got some good tips, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you decide to try any of this or, or uh, would like to show your progress, use the hashtag LGO2022 for Let's Get Organized 2022. Go um, to Kara Brandon and Friends on Facebook and uh, see what other people are doing in this big collaboration. There's like 18 of us, I think, doing it. Um, anyway, so it's been a lot of fun and boy was it ever needed. So, at least for me anyway. So have a great day everybody. Um, there's, um, I have a, f a couple more videos in the 5S uh, series that are linked in the playlist that I will put at the end of this video so you can see those as well. And check out what everybody else's videos are too in the, in the challenge and I'll have that linked uh, in the description box below. So have a great day, everybody. Happy crafting. Let the serendipity find you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.